Well, good morning to all of you. I am so thrilled and blessed to have been invited here today. My name is Stephen Greenway, and I am a proud Walton High School alumnus and an entering freshman at Georgia College and State University. I have also been enrolled in Cobb County Schools all of my life, making this a personal honor to inspire and to challenge all of those that serve the school system that I love. I firmly believe that there is no greater honor than public service. There is no greater privilege than to invest in the lives of young Americans and to pave the way for students to run towards their greatest ambition. Your efforts have made Cobb County one of the most attractive places for parents to send their children to school. And each year, more and more people flock to our communities to eagerly take advantage of our public education. We are fortunate because we have parents, teachers, and citizens who are constantly asking, how can we avoid teaching to a test and still raise student performance? Most importantly, we have young people who are hungry for accomplishment in the classroom, in the theater, and on the field. Now don't be mistaken, we young learners grasp how challenging these past few years have been. And we realize that it would be easy to just try and wait it out, hoping that things get better in a few months or a few years. But my age group does not have that luxury. This is our economy, our job market, and our America. We cannot afford to settle for less when it comes to our education or our job training. We must be prepared. Because of the fiscal irresponsibility and political inaction of our time, we are well aware that our generation will face unprecedented challenges. And at our young age, we are committed to meeting these problems with solutions. Yes, it is true. This is another year of uncertainty, whether it be budgetary constraints or increasing class sizes. But even in the midst of so much hardship, time and time again, we have seen the educators of Cobb County fight to keep the dreams of their students alive, no matter the political distractions or economic circumstances of the day. Over the course of the next year, you and your administration will set the tone and the mood of your school. And your students will be motivated by the hope and the resolve that you carry. As a school system, we face adversity. But I know firsthand how hardship and difficulty can teach us so much about ourselves and about what we are made of. You see, over the course of my own academic career, I have fallen short again and again. I did strive to succeed in rigorous courses, but at the end of my high school career, I found myself on a waiting list. And failure stings. And it burns. And when I was lost and without faith in my own abilities, my teachers and my administrators would tell me this. Stephen, no matter how defeated you feel, this is who you are. Keep going. Keep moving. Keep believing. Ladies and gentlemen, every student needs to hear and to trust those words. Every student needs to believe that no matter what uphill battles are, are being fought at home or in the classroom, a grade or a score cannot be put on their worth. It means so much to be looked in the eye, to have a hand placed on a shoulder, and to be told that we matter and that our future matters. And oh, how many countless lives that you have touched because of the compassion and the encouragement that you have displayed to so many of my peers that have felt crushed by the system and saw giving up as the only way out. Our mission is to empower those students who are without clear direction or obvious ambition. As students, we need not an easy road to victory, but the tools required to bridge the gap between our goals and our future accomplishments. The ability to think analytically, communicate effectively, and use science and technology to creatively innovate are skills that are crucial to our success as professionals. By establishing rigorous standards, we will then motivate our students to push themselves beyond their comfort zone and to test and expand their academic abilities. 
As students, we must own our education. Our grades should not be given to us. We must earn them. The doors can be opened, opportunities can be provided, and skills can be obtained, but at the end of the day, we have to be expected to walk through the door ourselves. Our school system should aspire to transform our schoolhouses into intellectual communities in which students are passionate about learning and are working together to master the information set before them. Our classrooms should foster debate and discussion in which every individual's perspective is honored. An emphasis on integrity is also required, and we too often forget this one. But accomplishment built upon dishonesty will not stand but men and women of good character typically persevere through any academic hardship. In summary, this kind of academic environment transcends but does not exclude scores and grades and instead focuses on meeting students where they are, building skills, and solving problems, thereby empowering our students to become life learners, team players, and outstanding citizens. In closing, I would like to tell a quick story about two young students that I met while I was serving in Southern Africa this past June. I was walking along a dirt road and with a group and we saw this young man pedaling towards us on a small bicycle and we greeted him in the native tongue. And he stopped by and he said hello to us and with the assistance of a translator we asked him his name and where he was headed. And he said he's coming home from secondary school. And we were like, oh, that's great, you know, where, where are you going? Where, I mean, what are you, what are you studying to be? And he said, I want to be a teacher. And in that moment, all of the faces of my teachers, the people that inspired me, who came alongside me and empowered me, just flashed before my mind. And I smiled at him and I said, why do you want to be a teacher? And he said, because there's little opportunity here. And I want to help the people in my village find jobs. I want them to find their dreams. And I went away amazed by that conversation. And the next morning, I met a young girl. Her name is Primrose. And I'll never forget the look on Primrose's face when she told me that she dreamed of being a nurse. And I asked Primrose the same question. I said, Primrose, why do you want to be a nurse? And she looked at me, and she just smiled again. And she said, because there are sick people in my village. And I want to help them. I want to heal them. You might assume, as I did, that these young dreamers would just accept that they are trapped by their disease, by their poverty, by their situation, that they cannot escape it. Yet, they dare to defy their circumstances. They dream of a better way of life, and each morning they wake up to fight for it. They dream of changing their world. May we be filled with that same burning spirit here today as we gather to unite under the belief that every person ought to be able to go as far as they can. This school system has the potential to lead the state of Georgia in a direction of academic excellence that it has never experienced before. I challenge you to listen to your students, honor their opinions, seek their voice, they can offer you important insight on what is furthering and on what is hindering their learning. Let us not leave here today with rhetoric on our lips, but with resolve in our hearts to make each day count, to value and to come alongside each and every child, and to make the 2013-2014 school year a year in which Cobb empowers the dreams of its students so that they might become a force for good in their world. For it is the ambitions and the education of our students that are the dawn for our school systems, for our communities, and for our nation. Thank you.